Today we're tearing down one of the weirder liquid cooler designs on the market. This is the NZXT M22. The pump is located centrally in the radiator. Now, this has a few implications for thermals, but the major implication is a legal one. The reason that companies like NZXT and their supplier, Apolitech, work with different orientation or location pumps in the loop is because Acetec actually holds a patent in the US that's been upheld against Cooler Master, specifically for the Side On series, that states that more or less the pump in the CPU block design is an Acetec design. Where else do you put it? Well, apparently you put it in the middle of the radiator. And to their credit, that's about the best thing you could do because it does make the most sense to have it here. But Acetec kind of owns that right now for at least some regions. So we're going to take this apart today and see how it actually works because it's quite different from the normal Acetec coolers that we see from basically the entire market. Before that, this video is brought to you by iFixit's brand new Manta driver kit. The iFixit Manta kit is a universal repair toolkit that includes 112 steel bits redesigned from the ground up with longer necks for 4mm bits, allowing more precision when working on components. The $60 iFixit Manta kit has everything from pentalobe drivers to Y drivers and standard bits. Learn more at the link in the description below. So a few things with this. We already tested it and have a review in the works. If you want to check the review, make sure you subscribe to catch that because it'll go up immediately after the teardown, like the next day. But to go over the basics, it's a closed loop liquid cooler. Functionally, it's the same idea as all the other ones. However, the radiator has the tube slightly differently positioned. So they're both offset to one side. Typically, you'd have one here and one here. Uh, but it looks like this might be some kind of fill or drain, which we'll look at momentarily. The pump is right here, and it's on both sides. You can see there are four screws here, which hold a plate on, which I'm assuming that'll allow us to get access to the pump, hopefully without destroying things. And then, obviously, this takes place of some of the fin stack. So there are no aluminum fins where this is. And the other thing to note is that this happens to be centered right where the hub of the fan is. The hub of the fan is basically a dead zone. So if you think about putting this fan once we get the, so if you think about putting this fan, the, the cable was in my hair, I had to get it out. If you put the fan here, you'll see that the pump is right behind the hub. You can't even really see the pump probably, or at least not too well. And that's because it's behind the hub. The hub's a dead zone, so it's not really pushing a ton of air through there. Now there is some bleed out. The pump comes out a bit around the edges towards the innermost part of the fan blade. So there, there will be some loss of airflow through that channel. And because we're not hitting fins, we're hitting just a block, the dissipation potential goes down. So that has some thermal implications, mostly negative ones, for this design. But depending on how good the pump is, it might make up for it. And depending on what's in this block, maybe they have a bunch of micro fins or something like that, which would certainly help. But what we don't know is what is in here. One would assume there are micro fins on the other side of the copper plate. So we've got two interesting things to take apart today. That's more or less the design. One more note, I suppose, is that this is an RGB illuminated uh, pump plate, or well, CPU block plate like always. So you get the NZXT logos. And then the pump itself has a cable coming out of it, kind of annoyingly, right on the radiator. But your fan's got a cable coming out of it anyway, so you can kind of just route them both out the same side and then tie them together. And hopefully that reduces cable clutter but it's certainly farther away from the motherboard than being on a traditional pump block. So let's take this thing apart. This cooler is made by a supplier known as Apolitech, and it's A-P-A-L-T-E-K. And they make a couple of coolers on the market. We've talked about them before, but this one is one that they make for now NZXT. They make it for Raid Max, and they make it for Zygmatech. Those are the three I know of presently that use this design. There might be one more, but those are the three main ones. So it's not the first time this design has been shown, and the supplier is not really unique. It is a pretty, it's, it is one of the smaller suppliers. They're small enough that they uh, kind of go under the radar for some of Acetec's legal filings with their other designs, but they're big enough that they can get clients like NZXT. So that's the supplier. Typically, Azatech makes most of the coolers on the market, including the other NZXT Kraken coolers. And they also, uh, some of the other suppliers include Coolit or Coolit if you prefer, which uh, they make some of Corsair's products. So this is just a plate. 
feels like steel. Pretty light, lightweight metal plate over uh, what looks to be the the motor, the electromagnet and motor for the pump. So once we get to the other side, you'll see how many poles it has, which are those coils uh, that form the electromagnet, which is what causes the impeller to move. And at this point, we might start leaking any second now. Oh, okay. Yep, there's liquid in there. All right, so there's our impeller. So let's kind of set this aside for a second while I figure out what to do with the liquid. You see the liquid? So that would be your almost certainly propylene glycol. Uh, and then you've just there's a rubber gasket around the outside. It's clamped down with, it looks like just eight screws and that's it, all Phillips head. And if you can see in the chamber there, we're not full to the top obviously because the, there was something displacing the water, but uh, the chamber looks pretty straightforward. So let's try and drain this so we can look at it more closely. Okay, that, that did not work. Fortunately, the Gamers Nexus anti-static mod mat is highly water resistant as we've learned doing this. If you want one of the mod mats, it's great for a build service. It has PCIe wiring guides and other diagrams on it as cheat sheets. It's a high quality rubber and print service that's great for PC building and is properly grounded for electrostatic discharge. And you can grab one on store.gamersnexus.net. And uh, once this cooler is done draining, I will finish my pitch for the mat. So there should be a lot more liquid in here, I think. Um, this will take a minute to get all of it out. I, but it, it does look like a standard propylene glycol mixture. What we don't know is how much is, uh, is glycol and how much is distilled water. That impacts the cooling performance. It impacts the storage temperature. Sometimes companies will go with a higher glycol mixture so that they can store their coolers in say negative 40 C, uh, whereas others might only target negative 20 C and would use a lower concentration of glycol, higher distilled water, which improves your cooling performance, but reduces the storage temperature or reduces it in a, a negative way anyway. I think that's mostly empty. There's probably, there should probably be more in there. Yeah, it's still leaking a bit, but that was not a lot of, f no, that's actually, that's about right. 100 milliliters. So in our experience with 120 milliliter liquid coolers and even now 120 is accurate. In our experience with 120s, they're typically 100 milliliters of liquid, which this is almost exactly that after you account for the spillage. So it should be pretty much empty at this point. Okay, so chamber. What we have is an impeller that's one of the weakest impellers I've seen in terms of design. This thing is not a great looking impeller. So it's a plastic blade on, uh, it's a plastic five blade design on top of the electromagnet. And we've seen plastic three blade designs, for example, but these blades are exceedingly shallow, which uh, would explain why it spins at such a high RPM, over 3,000 RPM. Because it's got to make up for the limited impeller size in millimeters. Diameter is not that large. I don't know exactly what it is. I guess we could check. 13 millimeters. 13 millimeters for the hub. This we're going to have to approximate because none of them are directly across. Roughly 25 millimeters for the impeller size, like blade to blade. So that's, that is one of the weakest impellers I've seen. It's a cheap plastic. I could definitely snap the blades if I squeezed on it. The, uh, to give you an idea, the sixth generation Asetek pumps that Corsair is now using and soon other vendors, those switch to a, an impeller that looks an awful lot like the old Dynatron impellers from the Antec Cooler 1250. Previously, Azetech, and we have footage of this too, had a yellow three-prong impeller in their 4.5 and 5th gen and 4th gen products. Uh, so this is, I don't know, it's, it, it does not impress me. As far as the rest, I guess we can try and see if this will come out. 
Is that a solder joint? Yes, that's a solder joint. This might not come out without breaking stuff. Okay. So PCB is attached to wiring. Did I break the wiring? No, shockingly did not. It's attached to the coils. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So six coils uh, for the electromagnet. And let's get a closer look at the rest of this thing. So at this point, it's probably time to remove the cold plate on the cooler. And that is going to take, it looks like either Torx or Pentalobe, which would be really, really annoying. Torx is fine. Yes, it's Torx. OK, cool. So worried it might be some proprietary thing. So how hard are these going to be? OK, well, this. The screws are certainly not in as tightly as they are with the Ace Attack products, which is neither good nor bad, aside from being easier to take apart. So here's the question. Do we have micro fins on the other side of that cold plate? And if you look at the sort of outlines and indentations, the answer is going to be yes. <clears throat> so what we have, is this a gasket? It is. So what we have is a rubber gasket that presses against the micro fins like that. And that's for pressure and flow reasons, for directional. Uh, the gaskets allow the flow to be manipulated so that it's higher pressure through the areas where you want higher pressure, and so that the flow is only entering or exiting where you want it to do so. So we've got a cutout over the center channel, which I'm not sure currently which side is in and which side is out. I'm not sure. Do they label it anywhere? No, of course not. OK, so we've got an in and out channel in here, basically. And what I need to do now is see if there's anything else to this, because this channel only goes, well, it probably goes to about the split in the cap. And then above that is going to be the NZXT probably created a custom PCB for their lighting functionality. They also created one for the Acetec coolers. They were the first company that Acetec allowed to create as custom of a lighting and PCB solution as they did for the Kraken Series X 42, 52, 62. So that was remarkable about those. I would assume they've done it for the same for this one. It does have the same sort of hue style color integration. And they've done the, the best job in their class of 120 coolers for RGB LEDs. Now, cooling is a different story, as you'll find out. But can I get any further in this? Not really. OK. So there's the top part of those channels. Nothing special there. There's not even liquid in this chamber, and there shouldn't be any. Screws here, tiny screws. That's going to be for dismounting the barbs. I guess we can see how the barbs are constructed as well. Uh, they are 90 degree rotational barbs. But that's really, for the most part, all you need to know about them. They might be held together with some piano wire or something. And then here's your NDXT, looks like NDXT made. RGB LED board with an ST electronics controller on it. There are a couple more screws in here that would take apart the infinity mirror. It's not really worth doing, to be honest, because it's not going to teach us anything. But if you wanted to replace, for example, if you wanted to rotate the NZXT logo on here to be a, a different orientation, then you, <laughs> you would basically not do any of the other stuff I just did. And you would just remove this cap from the body. That's the only step you'd do. It wouldn't expose water to anything. And then you would take these screws out, and you could flip the logo around, which some people asked about for the original Kraken series. So that's how you'd do it on this one. That looks like a custom NZXT design, though, for that board. So that's the teardown of this thing. Basically, core components. There's a gasket, as always, covering a set of micro fins. I can't measure the density here, but it doesn't look that different from the Ace Tech designs. Uh, maybe fewer of them, maybe a smaller cold plate. Pumps in the body of the radiator, as illustrated earlier. And then the rest is over here. 
This is not a pump block. It's really just a block that water goes through. So uh, there's actually no real conduction going on up here uh, at the pump level. Not much, anyway. So what's happening is you've got some conduction, obviously, through the cold plate, most of the majority of it, taking energy away from the, in the form of heat, away from the CPU. And then as it goes through the pump, uh, it, or well, the pump is pulling liquid through the tubes, is what I should say. So as it goes through these tubes and down the radiator tubes, as normally, it's hitting the, uh, these tube lines in here, getting conducted away by the fins, which then the fan dissipates it. So pretty straightforward design, except the pump is on the radiator instead of on top of the CPU. Definitely interesting to look at. Perhaps not the best way to do it, but you do have to give them credit for trying to do something different without violating or potentially violating Acetec's patent, depending on how they feel about it or how Acetec feels about it, because they're definitely partners too. So that's obviously a concern. Not too many other ways to do it. This is probably not the best one. The impeller is uh, certainly a lower grade impeller than I'd like to see. The pump is a bit small, to be fair, so you can't fit much different in there than this. But they can't really make the pump much bigger either, because then you're exiting the fan hub, which they're kind of already doing for your only dead zone size, that's forgiving, and, uh, and taking up more dissipation area where the fins would be. So the best solution after that might be a pump attached to the tank on the radiator, but then you have mounting support limitations in cases. Cases that say they can support 240 won't be able to support 240 with a pump on the tank if it's already barely supporting 240 normally. So not a lot of options. Anyway, very interesting cooler. It's 100 bucks for this one. We can probably salvage it if, I don't know if it's worth it, but we can probably put it back together. And if you want more, as always, subscribe for more. The review of this cooler with thermal data is coming probably tomorrow after this one uploads. Obviously, testing was done before the teardown. And go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of the mod mats that you saw used in this video or one of our 3D teardown cubes like this one here with a three-dimensional GN logo. And of course, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.